with uh, 242 uh, affirmative votes, six negative votes, and zero abstention. Abstention. House Bill Number 6953, an act providing for COVID-19 response and recovery interventions and providing mechanism to, the, to accelerate the recovery and bolster the resiliency of the Philippine economy, providing funds therefore and for other purposes is hereby approved on third and final reading. The Majority Floor Leader. Speaker Alan Compañero Vitor Cayetano will now address the body. <clears throat> Thank you, Majority Leader. <clears throat> if my people, which are called by name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. 2 Chronicles 7.14 As we humble ourselves before the Almighty God, we ask for His grace, for His mercy, for His forgiveness. We ask for the healing of our people and of our land, not just from the virus, but from the conflicts that continue to divide our country, from moral decay, and from all the, that ails us as a people and as a nation. May we find common cause in His love to stand together and to heal and to recover as one. The purpose of government is to do good and to prevent evil. In a few minutes, we're going to vote on Bayanihan 2. We pass laws that enable and empower the executive to fulfill its duties. Historically, as in the present case, government is almost only able to react to the changing situation as we work to save the lives and livelihoods of people. That's why we're always reminded that you cannot have old solutions for new problems. But if we are to have a better future, we need to do more than just aim for survival. Madalas po natin sabihin dito, maganda po yung programang pantawid. Pero hindi pwedeng habang buhay, pantawid na lang. Kailangan tulungan natin makaahon ang ating mga kababayan. Government must and will lead the way in adapting, innovating, and managing every aspect of this public health and economic crisis. And we need the cooperation of everyone to act, to make it to work. We appeal to our fellow Filipinos, let us act as one. We, the members of the House of the People, stand before you today humbled by the enormity of the task that history and circumstance has laid before us to bring our nation back to the brink of public health and economic ruin, ruin brought about by this global pandemic. Wala po sa atin nung tumakbo nung 2019 ang nag-isip na marar, madadanasan natin itong pandemya na to. Wala po sa atin dito ang may plataforma or may solusyon o may programa how to deal with this public health crisis. As we commune with our constituents, opo, during the pandemic, umikot po kami sa amin pong mga kababayan, ang mga party list sa kanilang mga sektor, at ang mga district congressmen sa kanilang distrito, at yung house leadership ay nakipag-ugnayan sa iba't ibang sektor, sa leaders po ng industriya, sa ekonomiya, sa ating po mga health professionals. Nakita po namin, we've seen the pain and suffering in their eyes. We are acutely aware of the responsibility that lies heavily, heavily on our shoulders. Like all of you, we have knelt in prayer and pleaded with the Lord to lift this trial na sana matapos na ang pagsubok na dala ng COVID-19. But at the same time, acknowledging that changing our ways and working hard for the welfare of others is our greatest offering to God and the nation. We have thus rolled up our sleeves and worked relentlessly with the executive branch of government, with the Senate, with the media, and our constituents to craft legislation, come up with programs that will work, try to find solutions to short- and long-term problems, 
also can help alleviate the effects of COVID-19, as well as the other challenges our people are already facing before this pandemic hit. Opo, marami ng problema bago pa nagkaroon ng COVID-19. Hindi po maaari na isolve natin ang mga problema ang dinudulot ng COVID-19, pero hayaan natin na walang solusyon ang problema before COVID-19. Katulad po ng trabaho, Totoo po yun, isang daan libong OFW ang bumabalik at kailangan natin tulungan. Pero kaya nga po sila umalis eh, dahil kulang ng trabaho, ng quality na trabaho sa ating bansa. Dati na pong maraming Pilipino ang walang trabaho, lalo na pong dumami ngayon. These efforts na ginawa po natin dito sa Kongreso have bore fruits. Yet we shall not talk now about these fruits or the many sleepless night of the sleepless nights of the debates, dialogues, discourse, Zoom meetings among your representatives, members of the cabinet, policy and health acts, experts, and frontliners because our people are still suffering. Kahit anong pag-usapan natin ngayon na nagawa ng Kongresa o resulta, alam naman natin po ang sasabihin ng constituents natin, kulang, tulong pa rin, tulong na maibsan po, ang mapait na karanasan sa pang-araw-araw just to survive. Because our people are still suffering, simply put, we just have to do better. We have to do more. We have to deliver. Tayo lahat po sa gobyerno. While we have seen this pandemic bring out the best in us as individuals and as people, allow me also to address the pressing issue of vanishing common sense discipline and concern for the welfare of our neighbors that is in no small part responsible for the escalating spread of the virus among various communities. Up to a few months ago, millions of Filipinos in Metro Manila and surrounding provinces and other highly urbanized places like Metro Cebu and Metro Davao uh, woke up every morning to take part in daily travail of commuting in a mega city packed with trains, uh, packed trains, cars, uh, mga puno na jeepney, na buses, and all other manners of wheeled vehicles, which were themselves stuck bumper to bumper in a slow-moving river of mechanized humanity. This migration was repeated every single working day. While many Filipinos have grown used to this daily metropolis-wide exodus, which often results in monstrous traffic jams, and at times, uh, at all times of the day, dati rush hour lang, pero madalas uh, sa Metro Manila, sa Metro Cebu, buong araw na. To the untrained observer, it is completely and utterly devoid of order and rules. Para bang wala nang batas. Even the environment, which is protected by stringent laws and rules, have not been spared. Grabe po ang damage sa atin ecology at environment before COVID-19. However, ang katotohanan po ay may batas. The truth is there are rules, just like every part of our life. Even the, the chaotic traffic of Metro Manila has its rules. Rules and law and order. After all, the bedrock of any functioning society is law and order. It's having rules, having laws that we all give part of our freedom to be able to follow these rules so that we can have more in life and more freedoms. Often, the most simple guidelines govern the most complex human interaction. When to speak, how long do we have to make eye contact, do we have to shake his hand, or bawal ba kamayan, where to sit, how closely do we stand uh, near each other, do we raise our voice or not, do you whisper or do you shout. None of us thought how much all of these rules were so important just a few months ago. Now we do. In fact, we must. Familiarity with these rules can mean the difference between living with the effects of this virus for weeks, months, or years of economic recovery or economic ruin. It could be a matter of life or death for many of us or for people we love. Let me put it this way. 
all that government has done or can do will be for nothing if we as individuals, as Filipinos, fail to do our part. No amount of laws, executive orders, fines, kahit anong pananakot po na gawin ng police o ng IATF, kahit anong guidelines po ng IATF or ng WHO. This cannot take the place of four very simple common sense rules. Wear a mask properly. Wash your hands frequently. Observe social distancing. And avoid unnecessary crowded places. May mga simple lang po na pag sinunod po natin lahat, lubusan, mababawasan ang pagkalat ng COVID-19. Sadly, the continued disregard for this rule forces us to re-examine our society. We need to ask ourselves, have we as a nation so completely lost our sense of patriotism, our common decency, our concern for our neighbors, even for our loved ones, that we need the police to enforce something so basic and so simple. Madalas po marinig na bakit may police dyan. Pero pwede po natin ibalik yung tanong, bakit nga? Eh kung lahat naman po tayo sumusunod eh. Tignan nyo po sa Subic Bay, di ba? Madalas po, wala kang makikita ang police. Bakit? O traffic enforcer. Kasi lahat tayo sumusunod sa traffic loss nung lugar na yon. Korea, Japan, Singapore, Vietnam. Madalas, ma madalas mabanggit. The success of these countries or the relative success of these countries in dealing with COVID-19 owes some part to the response of their government. Leadership always matters. But more to the readiness of their people to do their part and make sacrifices for the common good. This is the lesson we have to learn and apply. But government cannot do this for us. We have to do it for ourselves. I know we have struggled, but I still have faith in the Filipino that we will find the discipline and the spirit of unity that is necessary to save our lives and our livelihoods, buhay at kabuhayan. Bayanihan is alive in all of us. Yes, we would disagree on many controversial political uh, legal issues. Pero pagdating sa paglaban sa COVID, pwede po tayo magkaisa. Today, as the whole world struggles with the effects of the new coronavirus or COVID-19, governments are working double time to come up with legislation and policies that would hedge against disaster all the while not knowing exactly where the danger will be or what form it, we, it may take months or years from now. And as each new research reveals, another terrifying fact about the virus and its effect, our common resolve to overcome these challenges must also grow stronger. Araw-araw po, we learn something new, something more terrifying. O balita, sa atin lang po, hindi po na, sinong hindi na shock sa atin? nung sinabi po na hindi na natin makakasama physically si Congressman Datol. Na isang magandang halimbawa ng kongresista, na kahit sabihin nating senior ka na, huwag ka muna mag-attend physically, hindi, trabaho ko ito. So somehow, every time that there is something negative, something that worries us, something that shocks us, we must find the strength to also find hope. So I will find hope in Congressman Datol's spirit and his fighting spirit and his attitude to work harder for our people, to work harder with you, my dear colleagues. The Bayanihan to Recover as One Act is the Filipinos um, the Bayanihan to Recover as One Act is the Filipinos loud and clear shot across the bow of this climate of uncertainty and despair. Kailangan malinaw po yun na itong Bayanihan to Recover as One o Bayanihan to ay magbibigay ng pag-asa sa marami pong nawalan ng trabaho at sa marami pong negosyo na nagsasara. We will not give up. We are prepared for the long haul and we will win this war. As we learn to adapt, innovate, and manage in this time of COVID-19, let us use this moment to proactively plan and implement a roadmap to a new and better Philippine society. Sa lahat po sa inyo na nag-attend ng sesyon, nag attend araw-araw, Sa ating majority leader na nag-lead ng Defeat COVID Committee, sa ating economic team na gumawa ng economic stimulus, sa ating finance at appropriation team dito sa Bayanihan 2, sa lahat po sa inyo, no, nandito sa harap ko ang Committee on Agriculture at talagang 
uh, gusto niyang i-fast track ang lahat ng kailangan sa agriculture. Sa Committee on Health, sa Committee on Tourism, sa Basic Ed, hindi ko po maiisa-isa ngayon po. No? Pero kayo po ay nagbibigay ng pag-asa. Dahil po, kayo ay naghahanap ng lunas sa mga problema. One that is built on the ideal set forth in our Constitution preamble. Simply put, we want to put up a kind of society where we can all say we love the Philippines. We love being Filipino. That's why we need a proactive plan. And ano po ang paradigm ng plano na to? One that is built on the ideal set forth by our Constitution's preamble. Simple lang po nakalagay dito. Of a just and humane society that will promote the common good, conserve and develop our patrimony, and secure to ourselves and our posterity the blessings of independence and democracy under the rule of law, a regime of truth, justice, freedom, love, equality, and peace. Lahat po ng Pilipino na intindihan to at lahat ng Pilipino, ito po ang gusto. In order to achieve this, Congress had made Bayanihan to more than just a reaction to the ravages of COVID-19. It is a response to the bigger challenge of remaking our society and spreading the wealth. Problema po lang, hindi lang po natin problema ang poverty. Problema din po natin na konti lang ang sobrang yaman sa ating bansa at maliit pa rin ang middle class natin. At makita po natin na yung marami sa middle class natin po ay galing sa pera ng OFW. At pag nagkaroon ng ganitong problema, limited ang pagtulong natin sa mga OFWs na umuuwi. Our challenge of bringing out wealth from our overcrowded cities, hindi lang po yung personal wealth o kung sino mas mayaman sa hindi, yung disparity din po ng ating pinakamayaman na mga syudad sa mga pinakamahirap natin na municipalities. Matagal na po nagsisilita, nagsasalita, nagpaparinig, sumisigaw, bumubulong ang ating countryside, ang rural areas. Pansinin nyo naman po kami. We should make them areas that have been neglected into underdevelopment to fertile hills and valleys of our 7,100 islands that we can be proud of. Bayanihan to recover as one is only one step. But it is a huge step. But many, many, many more steps are needed on this journey. And many, many more to bring our people to the welcome shores of safety and security. These are steps that we need to take together as partners in change, sharing the same vision for peace, progress, and prosperity. We have to put the people, their lives and livelihood, buhay at kabuhayan, first in this law. And at its center, we have placed public health, micro, small, medium enterprises, OFWs, our athletes, the creative industry, mga performing artists na lahat na wala ng trabaho, social amelioration, mga teachers po natin na nawala ng trabaho, mga pastor po natin na tuloy po na nag-minister sa flock nila, mga pare, pero wala din po pumapasok na pambayad po ng kuryente o pagbayad ng mga gastusin sa simbahan. Many, many more po na hindi ko nabanggit. Jobs, jobs, jobs. Kailangan po ng trabaho. We want Bayanian 2 to be a living piece of legislation that will empower our industries and revitalize sectors of society that have been disseminated by the virus or were, other pro were otherwise forgotten and neglected in the past. Agriculture and tourism, sectors that are essential to our economy. Grabe po ang multiplier effect ng trabaho dito. Sabi na, for every two to three tourists, isang trabaho na kre-create. Sa agriculture naman, sabi po nila, two out of three jobs in the country is related to agriculture. So can you imagine po, if agriculture grows during this time, and we can prepare for the return of tourism. Pero let's not fool ourselves. If Thailand was number one sa ASEAN before the pandemic, and we do nothing, How do you expect that we will be number one or magro grow ang tourism? It has been growing, but it can grow in a much faster pace if we prepare and we build and we take the necessary action to build, you know, the the industry or or create the ecosystem 
for people to be able to invest in the industry and for it to be very attractive to foreign and local tourists. So too will the manufacturing industry, which with the right elements to create the right ecosystem or environment, wherein ma manufacturers will return and thrive, will form the third leg in the triumvirate. These three sectors will form the spear tip of our recovery effort and underlies our key philosophy of putting back to work so that we can, get, we can all get back on our feet. ATM. Lahat po tayo ngayon, lalo po kung kailangan ng pera sa banko, alam yung ATM. Pero hindi po automatic, automated teller machine ang ATM na pinag-uusapan ng Kongreso. Agriculture, tourism, manufacturing. Sa buong mundo po ngayon, nagre-evaluate lahat ng bansa. Bakit tayo pumayag na mawala ang manufacturing sa ating bansa at mag-focus ito sa China, Vietnam, at iba pang lugar na attractive? While the laws of, eco of economics have not changed, and some countries will still be better and more attractive for manufacturing, some key uh, products have to be manufactured in your country. Example po dyan is pharma or pharmaceuticals and yung PPEs. Kaya po nung naging worldwide yung pandemic, kung sino po man ang may factory o nagmamanufacture sa kanilang bansa, got, got ahead. Pero dun po sa nagre-rely, kahit nasabi mo Filipino-owned company yan, kung nasa Vietnam o nasa China, may difficulties in getting it here. But we have to set the tone. We have to prepare the environment na payagan at maging attractive sa mga manufacturers na bumalik sa Pilipinas. But it takes more than just a lot to get things going. We need both a roadmap for familiar places we need to go and to blaze a trail out of the wilderness that we have lost. We need a pragmatic plan that can be funded and implemented immediately and effectively. And once we have this, we need everyone to be on board, carrying their weight. Nothing we do can succeed without the most crucial ingredient of national unity. And no challenge will be insurmountable if we face it, bowing our heads to God and acting in unison. At the end of the day, Bayanian 2 is more than just an enumeration of benefits to certain sectors and industries, or an aggregation of budgets to help our kababayans, or a list of programs of different agencies. It is a reaffirmation of the spirit of cooperation and community that our race is famous for. Bayanihan is about Filipinos helping Filipinos. Na sarili mong uh, trabaho, sarili mong gawain, sarili mong interes ay itatabi mo sandali para tulungan ang kapitbahay mo in the spirit ng bayanihan. It is about reaching out, reaching across geographic and political divide. It is about hope in the darkest moments and most desperate places. It is about faith in God and ourselves as His children. Finally, it is said, but true, it is sad, but true, that during these times of difficult and despair, that there are still those who call themselves Filipinos, but wish nothing more than this government shall fail. Wala po problema sa nagre-criticize. In fact, marami sa nagre-criticize, nakakatulong. Tignan niyo po yung PhilHealth. Kung hindi niyo criticize, hindi natin madidiscover ang napakalaking uh, problema dyan at yung mga anomalya. Pero meron po iba hindi criticize para magbago eh. Meron pong iba na gustong bumaksak ang gobyerno. And while that could be political fair game during non-crisis times, di ba? Kasi ang politics naman is whoever gets the power to be able to uh, implement a better platform. So whether election yan or a other constitutional means of getting power, that's part of politics. But during a crisis, ang pagbaksak ng gobyerno causes thousands of deaths and maybe tens of thousands of deaths. And for some, it may appear that their dark desires are coming to fruition. So pag nakikita na nagra po at lumalabas ang tao sa Amerika, parang, oy pwede sa din sa atin dito. E tignan niyo po ang resurgence ng COVID-19 sa Amerika. Let's pray for them. 
for their social cohesion, for their problems, including hate and racism. Pero yung gusto natin gayahin, sa pagkatingin nyo, ito'y magdudulot ng pagbabago. Sakit lang po ang idudulot nito sa akin. For it is easy to pick out the inevitable mistakes in a crisis. Yes, this government is not perfect. When you pick out these mistakes and and make it part of the nature and hold it up as an example of a larger systematic collapse, hindi na po criticism ito to help. But that is a mistake, a big mistake. Filipinos will never give up, nor will we ever give in to the hopelessness that they want us to embrace. It is a mistake for people to think na pwedeng pabaksakin ang gobyerno just because meron pong imperfection. We will continue as one nation to struggle through to ourselves, but also to strive not just for survival, but for greatness amidst tribulation. Parati po yan. Pag may, great, pag may crisis, may great challenges, danger, but may great opportunities then. At yun po ang paghamon sa atin sa 18th Congress. How do we see, how can we view these challenges and how can we put into legislation, into programs, ito pong mga solusyon that will leapfrog us ahead of others after the crisis. And as we speak of greatness, we are reminded of what the Bible says, that no greater love is there than when one lays down his life for another. Let us take our inspiration and motivation not from the fear of our people or of individuals, not from the adversity of some people na hindi natin kapanalig sa politika, but from the sacrifices of our frontliners, our medical and health workers, our police officers, soldiers, local government officials, governors, mayors, vice governors, vice mayors, councillors, bukals, Barangay health workers, nutrition scholars, kagawads, kapitans, tanods, teachers, artists, those who prepare to deliver our food, the farmers in the field, the priests, the pastors, the imams who continue to minister to us, and the countless nameless Filipinos who keep our bodies and soul nourished. It's our opportunity to tell you no greater love is there than one who's willing to lay down his life. Thank you. Maraming salamat po na you're risking your life every day para po sa amin, para po sa Pilipino. Let's give a hand sa ating uh, frontliners. No? May our contribution to our recovery do justice to all of your sacrifice and be worthy offering to the Lord. We give you our word that we will continue working and we will continue to do better. In this point, I'd also like to take the minority. You have pointed out our in inadequacies. You have pointed out pag may mali sa legislation. You have helped make it better. But you have acted with us in one spirit. So together, the majority and minority have produced good laws. But we have to do better. We have to do it faster. May God heal our land and may God bless the Philippines. Majority Leader. Maraming salamat, uh, Speaker Alan Tita Cayetano, and thank you for your leadership.